Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We just finished up looking at The Doors for Psychedelia Week. We're going to be moving into some special selections. And if you're interested in submitting your own special selection, there is a link in the description for a link tree. It'll take you to a menu where you can do that. All right, so today's special selection comes at us from Damien. It says, this is Weight of the World with Japanese lyrics. The Japanese title is Kowareta Sekai no Uta, which means Song of the Broken World. This is the credits song and probably the one that hits players the hardest. Uh, once again, this is from the Near Automata, Automata soundtrack. I don't expect you to get the same emotion as the players since you'll lack the context. This song exists in three versions, English, Japanese, and Chaos language. The different versions play depending on the ending you reach, and the lyrics are not a translation of each other, the English one being the lighter. Up to if you want to check out the other versions, but for this one I'm requesting the Japanese one. So that is very interesting that there's actually three versions of this song, uh, the lyrics, and that they are the lyrics aren't reflective of each other. Um, so I do have the lyrics pulled up here. They'll be linked in the description if you want to check them out. It is a translation from the Japanese lyrics into English. And, uh, yeah, let's get into this. I did glance over the lyrics, though, and they are very, uh, remorseful. Lots of regret. Um, I think it's going to be a, a pretty dark song. Uh, and like Damien said, it's, uh, uh, the song impacts a lot of players during this credit scene. So, yeah, let's see what's going on. Some really fun syncopation there. This is not. Yeah, those whispers are very interesting. I also like how the piano and vocals, how they kind of play off of each other in that section. We had that really strong uh, violin soaring over, just that very abrupt cutoff coming into the section. positivity that I didn't quite see in the lyrics but there is an undertone of it in the lyrical content yeah I love the, the rhythmic playfulness that's present all throughout this song Yeah. 
discussion too. Really selling the larger than life aspect here. Strings dancing around each other right here. Yeah, I, I could definitely see why that was chosen uh, for a special section. I can definitely see possibly how it might be, have more of a connection with people who have played the game and they come to the end credits and then, you know, this is their uh, sort of reward, uh, getting to hear this, this emotional piece here. And it really comes together at the end with a lot of the emotional mix the the mixed emotions of the music coming into the vocals as well and providing a bit of that that edge of uh sadness or regret into the vocals uh just really great way to end that track so there is a lot going on in here that i probably missed because it is executed at such a level that everything sort of blends together into this singular idea. There's a lot of there's a lot of instruments in this track. But at least for me on my first time listen, I, I didn't really employ that orchestral listening concept and check out everything individually. It, the song really demanded I listen to it as a whole. Um, which is interesting. <laughs> Usually I don't walk away from a song thinking, you know, what am I going to talk about on an individual level? I, I really only have an overarching view of this song. But the song really did the band out of me, and that's uh, how I ended up listening to it. Um, so, you know, let's, let's dive into this a bit and uh, see how some of these things line up to create uh, an atmosphere of specific emotions and how some of these lyrics tie into that. Um, first, I do want to point out, though, I brought it up twice, rhythmic playfulness. When you listen to some of the percussive elements, you listen to the rhythms of some of the melody lines, you listen to the rhythm, some of the atmospheric and textural concepts, there is a lot of playfulness in here where... There's almost a rhythmic hocket going on, and that's where you can hear rhythms from multiple voices, multiple instruments that come together to create a, a singular rhythmic idea, but you hear it in pieces and parts from different instruments. Um, and it happens so often in here. Uh, some of it is hidden behind a sort of call and response idea as well. Uh, there is one part 
I think it's right before the chorus. And the vocalist will hold out a note and then the piano will play that note with them. And on the second or third time, I think a violin also harmonized. So you get this really nice triad on that section. I mean, on that note. And then there's a pause. And then the vocalist does another uh, syllable and then a pause. And in those pauses, the piano does a little bit of run between all of them. The interesting thing is, is that on the third time, the vocalist holds out a note and then continues the phrase, continues the sentence. But if you listen to that piano, it's still filling in what would have been silence on the last two uh, repetitions of this idea. Um, and just hearing these uh, rhythmic ideas bouncing around throughout the song, it is gorgeous. There is this uh, strong concept of uh, unity running through the song. Um, not just what I mentioned about the song sort of demanding to be listened to as a whole, but also this idea that no one instrument is going to carry the song. No one instrument is going to hold a single idea of the song. Everybody is contributing in some way, whether it's rhythmically, harmonically, uh, texturally, melodically. Nothing is doing it by itself. There is this strong concept of unity in every aspect of this song. And that is just, mm, it is good. It is good. Um, I, I just, I absolutely love how often I'll be listening to something and say, hey, this other instrument complements it perfectly. Maybe it is uh, a harmonizing. Maybe it is a hocket. Maybe it's a call and response. But there's always uh, this idea that no instrument is isolated. No voice is doing something by itself. And uh, start to finish, I, I would have to go back and listen to how they, how the intro of the song was. Uh, I don't know if that specifically applies there. I remember it was sparse, but I don't remember how sparse. But I would wager that even the intro has uh, two instruments playing off of each other and uh, supporting each other in some manner. Um, the music... Uh, embodies very specific but also a wide gamut of emotions. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned reading the lyrics and kind of expecting something a bit more downtrodden, a, a bit a bit heavier musically, and we come in with a song with this uh, optimism, this brightness to it. Uh, and I was a bit confused by that, but I think it works very well. Because it allowed me to view the, the lyrics in a different light. And there are a bunch of overtones and undertones and regular tones. Uh, atmospherically, or sorry, emotionally present in the music and the lyrics. And, and being able to hear the music and have the lyrics here and bounce ideas off of both of them. Really helped me understand what's going on here. Um, there is certainly a brightness and optimism to the music. I think that's undeniable, but there's also uh, a longing, uh, a sort of melancholy aspect to the music as well that presents itself often in the strings. And the reason I bring up the strings is because they, while they do utilize some melodic elements and help support the uh, the piano lines and the vocal lines, they also present the larger-than-life atmospheric textural concepts as well. And I think that this larger-than-life idea is where the pensiveness comes from. It's sort of... Uh, the violin specifically, at least, for me, sits above everything else in the mix. And it's sort of like the, the bird's-eye view down onto the world as the song is titled weight of the world and a lot of this song is about uh the world of the character or the game or whatever and sort of having this uh view of both the past and the events that led up to the present as well as of uh, you know some of these actions and what they mean for the future um there is uh Yeah, there's some lines in here that's repeated throughout the chorus. Uh, it says, even though it's worthless, I still cry out the song of that broken world. Even though it's meaningless, I still wish just for a future together with you, even if my prayers will not grant me forgiveness. 
there's definitely this idea that the past, there's been some actions that have caused regret uh, in the past, but that what is right now is something of joy, says the uh, a love for this corrupted world. And then, of course, there's this uh, idea of a better future. I just want more time together with you. And I believe the you is this world. Uh, there is no other person that is talked about in this uh, in the lyrics. Uh, so I'm going to assume it, that it is this world that this person wants more time to be with or on or, you know, however you want to go about uh, viewing that. There's a lot of this uh, idea of past, present, and future showing up in this chorus that's repeated four times. So this this concept of uh, past actions that have regret that have also led to uh, the present situation, which has implications on what the future is going to bring, the future being a bit brighter than the past was, uh, it shows up many times in the lyrical content. And I like the idea of this larger than life uh, aspect that the strings bring while also being mixed above everything else, sort of being this bridge between time, having that pensive element, uh, looking back on the past while also being able to see uh, the future. Uh, and sort of uh, like the pensive brings about elements of melancholy as well. Um, so you have these overtones of melancholy uh, and deep thought against this sort of bright and optimistic core uh, emotion being brought about in uh, the vocal melody and the piano. Some of the uh, drums can kind of sit in both worlds. We have some more down-to-earth drums, but then we also have these super wide, larger-than-life drums that come in as well. Um, and it, so, man, I just realized that too. We have this really cool contrast between micro and macro as well with, uh, you know, smaller aspects and then larger than life aspects and seeing how they can balloon and, uh, how the smaller parts can balloon into the bigger ones and they can shrink back down and sort of this, uh, relationship between the here and now versus uh the larger idea of time yeah just oh my god there's like i said there's a lot of depth here and i'm only picking all this up on a first listen uh i can't imagine how much more is here for uh subsequent ones um what else did i want to talk about though uh we got the contrast we got uh the violins oh oh we were talking about emotions yes um, so we also have the vocals and I think the vocals were an interesting choice. They are carrying the lyrics that I had originally read to be as rather regretful and pensive. Um, and they're done sort of, uh, straight and poppy. I would say it's not, uh, there's not a lot of sorrow in them. Uh, they tend to be what I thought was fairly standard for pop music, but it wasn't until the end when some of the sorrow really started to hit me. Um, and of course it was intentionally done that way there. We had the isolated vocals for the, um, chorus. And then after that, we of course had the isolated vocal period on that final sentence that, uh, fades out, uh, uh, beginning another statement. She says, uh, even if my prayers will not grant me forgiveness, I, and then a fade out, doesn't even finish the sentence. Um, both of those sections were designed to evoke strong negative emotions uh, in the listener, I would say. There's a lot of uh, vocal, not vo uh, like breathy wavering. Actually, there's some vocal wavering in there as well. Uh, almost, I think there were a couple sobs as well. The vocalist really injected a lot of this uh, more negative emotion into uh, her performance of it. And I think it works so well having these, uh, you know, these elements of, of bright and darkness, uh, happy and sad, uh, pensive and sorrow, uh, you know, all of this kind of working together in the vocals because it's present in the music. It's present in the lyrics. There's so much synergy 
uh, thematic synergy throughout this entire song. And I can only imagine how impactful this is if you had just finished the game, which I'm going to assume explores some of these themes as well. Um, and to have this playing. And I find it interesting, again, because uh, Damien said that these... Uh, this this end credit song has three sets of uh, ver uh three sets of lyrics to them in three different languages, and they are not direct translations of each other. They all have their own something to them. They're all different in their own way. With the English one being lighter, I believe is what uh, what they said. So, um, it's interesting again that whatever actions the player may have taken in the game to get to this uh, song may have been some regretful actions, in which case the music is really going to amplify those ideas. Um, yeah, just, I don't think I gush a lot about multimedia on this channel. I do know I gush a lot about music as a pure art. <laughs> I do talk a lot about pure music. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one of those times where we can look at interactive multimedia and see ways that music can be utilized in interactive fashions. And I think it's phenomenal to see something like this, where we can take what I assume is the same underlying musical aspect and just changing the vocalist the vocal delivery and the lyrics themselves on top of it and creating completely different pockets of emotions that are going to resonate with how somebody interacted with this media. Um, that's just phenomenal. It's fascinating. It's uh, just, mm, that is, that is the height of art. I think right now, um, ah, man, that might be a bit much the height of art. It's definitely, uh, a new way that art can be utilized that I find fascinating. I think that's that's a much more rooted <laughs> opinion on it. Um, and it's just, it's, it's fascinating. I think that's the best word for it. And uh, dang, who was this? I've completely blanked on this. Uh, Kiechi Okabe. Yeah, this is a composer I'm going to have to keep my eye on. Uh, assuming that his other works are as phenomenal as this and uh, yesterday's Memories of Dust. Definitely somebody I'm going to have to keep on my, uh, my short list of uh, modern composers. Put him in the same places like Austin Winery or uh, Darren Korb. Uh, just... Yeah, phenomenal stuff. This is where you guys can hit me up with your comments. Let me know if you enjoyed this or not. If you've played this game, let me know if, you know, I'm kind of hitting on the same emotions that maybe you felt when you heard this segment. Um, and if you have any context, go ahead and let me know about that as well. Above the comment section, there's a description box. In there is a link for Linktree. You click it, you see this menu. Uh, it'll take you to a bunch of stuff related to the channel. If you see right there, special selection submission. If you want to do your own special selection, let me know exactly what you want me to check out. That's the button you got to click. All right, you can also join the Discord community, support me through Patreon, email me, uh, follow me on Twitter, all of it. There's a bunch of stuff in there. Above the description box, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. All three things have out the channel immensely. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical but not cynical of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.